Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. Please be seated. Welcome to worship and special welcome to you if you're watching online. Our focus today is the extent of the grace of God poured out in Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, taste and see that the Lord is good. Let's share together in our opening prayer, our prayer of adoration. But before we, we actually pray it, let's just pause and just uh, be conscious that we're in the presence of God and that God's Spirit seeks to minister to each one of us during this service. Let's share in the prayer together. Gracious and eternal God, your loving kindness cannot be contained by the cosmos. Your acting to put things right stands like grand mountains. Yet you save humanity and all creation alike. You offer safety to all humanity. Yours is the fountain of life. Amen. Let's sing our first hymn, Come As You Are. Uh, last week, I believe, the theme was around gifts. And uh, you might have seen that there's some, some, some of uh, the little blocks that were put together as gifts for last week still out in the foyer, and you're welcome to take those. I thought this morning, just briefly in our early word, I'd just mention something about Desmond Tutu. As you know, Desmond Tutu died about two weeks ago, and you might have seen the... Maybe it was three now. And you might have seen the... Um, the services and uh, the other events that surrounded uh, that, his death on the, um, on the TV. But uh, I don't know, have any of you actually been in the presence of Desmond Tutu? Yeah, Bob has, because he was here in 1987. 
1987, NCYC, National Christian Youth Convention, NCYC in Ballarat, I think it was, and he was the guest speaker. And uh, as I was saying to someone during the week, um, I, I can't remember who it was, but someone I know ended up in a lift with, <laughs> with him and had a wonderful five minutes with a private conversation with Desmond Tutu. But what do you think about him? What are the things that stand out about, about him? I mean, At the end. All right. Well, we're using that today, and I'll have the words on the screen. So that's that that kind of those that affirmation by Desmond Tutu that I sometimes use at the end of the service. But what other things come to mind when you think of him? Yes. 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 Yeah. Arch. <laughs> So he was very hu humble, wasn't he, and, and human, and, and, and I believe that's what they called him in, in South Africa, right up to the end of his life. He was sort of, that was his nickname, Arch. <laughs> yes, he did, that's right. He was courageous, absolutely. He, he was, I mean, he really could have been locked up and even the potential of being put to death. Uh, he would have been a target, but he was courageous. And, um, but he had such life and vitality about him. Whenever I've seen him speaking, there's a kind of an energy, isn't there, which speaks something of the gospel. And then at the end of, you know, after apartheid ended, he was involved with, do you remember the truth and reconciliation process? Where they sought to shine the light of truth on the situation and bring people together who had been, uh, who had been uh, very much, well, Unfortunately, for the most part, there were, there were white perpetrators and black folk who had really been under their oppression. And there was a, se a sense of trying to bring the country together. Just a wonderful man. So I just thought, because it does connect a little bit with our theme, that he was a wonderful ambassador for the grace of God and the life of God and the hope of the gospel. Uh, yeah, that's right. And did you see, any of you see his daughter speaking on TV? And she just sounded a bit like him. And I thought, oh, she'd be good. <laughs> she had such energy and vitality. Yeah, just, just a wonderful, wonderful expression of the gospel. Linda, we were, I was just saying that last week you did a thing on gifts. Um, is it put, throwing it too much on you just to, tell, just to say what the little gifts are, at, are out in the foyer so people, if they weren't here last week, will know what that's about? Where's my mask? Uh, so out in the foyer there are some little wooden squares wrapped up uh, with a piece of ribbon and a tag on them and one side has um, the desert scene and the three wise men and on the other side it says um, what gifts do you bring to Jesus and so our theme last week was all about the gifts the wise men bringing the gifts and I was asking the congregation members what gifts do we bring to uh, uh, to the community here at St Luke's, to all our other involvements out in the wider community as well. And everybody was given one of these little gifts to take home and just reflect upon what gifts you can bring to Jesus. So you're welcome to take one. There's, there's more out there. So if you didn't, weren't here last week, um, please take one. And just when you've got a quiet time at home, you might like to sit with that and think about what gifts you can bring. Thanks. If there'd been some, some people of younger years here <laughs> to this morning, I was going to um, show, and you may have seen this, this is the book that Desmond Tutu authored for, um, uh, uh, called God's Dream. It's a children's book. And it, so it underlines one of the things that was absolutely central to, to what he was about and what the gospel's about, that God, loved, God cares for every single human person, that each human person is made in the image of God. And that's what that little book's about. The other thing I was going to say to the, the children, this is kind of an introduction to our, to our gospel reading, which we're about to hear, was that um, in the gospel reading, which is about the, the feast at Cana of Galilee, there's mention of these large urns which contained um, 20 to 30 gallons of water each. So I was going to do some arithmetic with the kids. I'll do it with you. 
Uh, there were six of them. So let's say there's six times 20, what's that? <laughs> 20, yeah. And what's that, four and a half litres to the gallon? Now I'll save you having to do the arithmetic, that's 675 litres. And then I was going to say to the kids, now you think about um, your bottles of plastic bottles of milk, your two litre plastic bottles of milk. <laughs> so that's 327 two litre plastic bottles of milk and one one litre one. <laughs> that, that's quite a lot of, of liquid. Uh, so when John's talking about this, there's, it's, a, um, um, it, it's a huge quantity. Let's listen now as we hear our gospel lesson from about the wedding feast at Cana of Galilee. Yeah, if you can get through. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the scripture reading is from John, the second chapter, 1 to 11. The wedding of Cana. The next day, there was a wedding celebration in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus' disciples were also invited to celebrate. The wine supply ran out during the festivities, so Jesus' mother told him, they have no more wine. Dear woman, that's not our problem, Jesus replied. My time has not yet come. But his mother told the servants, do whatever he tells you. Standing nearby were six stone water jars used for Jewish ceremonial washing. Each could hold 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told the servants, fill the jars with water. When the jars had been filled, he said, now dip some out and take it to the master of ceremonies. So the servants followed his instructions. When the master of ceremonies tasted the water that was now wine, not knowing where it had come from, though of course the servants knew, he called the bridegroom over. A host always serves the best wine first, he said. Then when everyone has had a lot to drink, he brings out the less expensive wine but you have kept the best until now. This miraculous sign at Cana in Galilee was the first time Jesus revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp to our feet. A light to our path. Whoops, we'll have to move that. <laughs> Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In Australia, as you well know, there are many who have labelled Christians as people who want to take the fun out of life, who think Christians walk the, the Christian walk is anything but life-giving. Now, I could give a two-hour lecture about this, pointing out how wrong this is, but, but how uh, there's some truth in it too, but you'll be relieved to know I'm not going to. <laughs> but I'm going to ask the question, what does one then make of today's reading? What does one make of today's reading? As I said earlier, after being pulled aside by his mother, and by the way, in John's Gospel, Mary's never called Mary. She's always called Jesus' mother. Jesus turns 150 gallons of water into wine. And as I said before, that's a lot of water and that's an awful lot of wine. Now, I've been reading up on this and apparently in Jesus' day, wedding feasts go on for days wasn't just a one night event. It, they went on for up to seven days. And there could be a lasting embarrassment for the hosts if the wine or the food ran out. 
their failure to provide hospitality, such an important thing in the Middle East, would not be soon forgotten in a small village. And of course the thing is in this story, in this account of the wedding feast at Cana in Galilee, it's not just 675 litres of wine, it's not just cheap plonk as the guy says, but it's grand hermitage. It's the best drop. Now I'm not going to get into a conversation about drinking alcohols because clearly there are excellent reasons not to drink alcohol or to drink moderately. And there would be a variety of views in this congregation about this. And of course in Jesus' day the extra dimension to it of course was that the water was not good. So people would drink wine. By the way, just an aside, did you know that Elizabeth I would drink beer at breakfast time? <laughs> the reason being, because you wouldn't want to drink the water. <laughs> Anyway, our water's great here in Geelong, so that's a good thing to be thankful for. But let's think about what the Gospel writer is doing by including this account in the Gospel and right at the very early part of it. By the way, this is the only place in the Bible where we read about this wedding feast at Cana. And it's the first miracle that Jesus performs in John's Gospel. So surely Jesus, I'm sorry, John is doing more than simply telling us an interesting story about Jesus. The reason he's including it is because it has to do with what John's trying to do in his whole gospel. His gospel is to make clear that Jesus can make a real difference in the life of his readers. That Jesus can change lives, he can change your life, he can change my life. That's what John's about. So what's going on here in this reading? John, tra sorry, Jesus transforms ordinary water into wine and on a scale that is mind boggling. Jesus provides so much wine and it is so good. And of course, here is the point. Here is the point where it all touches us. It is the same thing with the love of God, with God's grace, the undeserved favour of God. So much grace and it's so good. Jesus is about opening people up to real life. Jesus is about confronting brokenness and bringing healing. He is do about doing more in our lives than we could ever anticipate or imagine. I think I've mentioned before the film Babette's Feast. Have you seen it? Have people seen it? it it's, look, you can get it on stream. Yes, a few. It's worth watching on streaming. Uh, it's PG for a start. <laughs> um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a really lovely film. And it's all about this woman, Babette, who is a French chef who ends up in this tiny little isolated village in Denmark which is con and, and the village people are all part of a very austere Christian sect. And cutting the story down to the bare bones, as a way of thanking this community for what they've done for her, she creates a wonderful meal as a sign of thanks. It's a lavish gift which costs a fortune. And these are people who live very, very ordered lives. And, 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 and everything is carefully done and appropriate and nothing, everything's sort of dark and, 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 and simple. And as you know, if you've seen the film, the people in the village struggle to accept this gift that she offers to them. They thought it was not appropriate to accept and enjoy such a worldly thing. But of course they do in the end of the film. They come rather tentatively and grumpily to the meal. And as they eat the food, it changes them. They, some joy enters their life. They are changed by this wonderful gift. 
John, in telling us the story of the wedding feast in Cana of Galilee, is telling us about the way Jesus similarly seeks to bless each of us with love with and love healing and beyond, healing beyond anything, anything we can anticipate, anticipate, or, anticipate or imagine. imagine. The gospel, the gospel is, about is about changing hearts, hearts brothers and brothers, sisters, sisters, about, sisters, about bringing comfort, comfort and hope, and hope and life, and life and joy, and joy to each of to us. Each of us. It's about, it's so, about much so much love, which is so, so, good. so good. One of my One favorite, of my favorite authors, authors is Philip is Yancey. Philip Yancey. Are, people, are people aware of Philip Yancey? Yancey? Some, some nods. Some nods in the, yeah, people, yeah, there, people there, there. A few there. hands up. More than the, More than seeing, the, Babette's, seeing feast. Babette's feast. But Philip Yancey, but Philip Yancey is a wonderful, a wonderful writer. writer. He writes, he very, writes clearly very clearly and honestly. And honestly. He's, mo he's, mo he's, mo he's written some really profound and lucid matters matters pertaining, pertaining to, the to the faith and he's not and he's not prepared to prepared pull to pull punches he asks, he asks hard, questions. hard questions so he's written so he's about, written about um, god and suffering. god and suffering he's written he's about, written about um, the damage the damage that the church, that the can, church do can do to some people yet as he yet writes as he writes in his most, in his most recent book, book, which is a memoir called, called um, uh, where, uh, the, where light the light falls, falls Oh, sorry. Where, oh, sorry, the, light where the light fell. He talks about, he talks the, about fact the fact that one of the other, one of the things, other things in his writing, in his writing is all about, is all grace. about grace. And, and perhaps one of his best, one of his known, best known books, books is, this book is this book called What's Amazing, amazing about, grace. about Grace. Some of you may, Some have, read you may have read it. Philip Yancey, Philip Yancey grew, up grew up in, in the, south the south of the United, of the United States. States. He grew, up he grew up in a culture, in a that, culture was that was heavily racist, heavily racist and, he would, and he would admit that he was caught, he was up, caught up in that, that and he was racist, racist too. too. He grew up, he grew in, the up in the most fundamentalist church, church you could, you could imagine. imagine. But, but in a sense, in a he, sense grew he grew up in all of this, this and it damaged him. him. And, uh, and uh, his early his life, early was, life incredibly was incredibly rocky, rocky because, his, because father his father died, died when, he, when was he was a baby. Because his father, his was, father only was only 23, but his father his contracted, father contracted polio, polio and died. And died. His, mother, his mother struggled to bring him and his brother up, but his mother was suffering from mental health issues. And, uh, and it was a very, very, and she was a single woman. In the late in the fifties, trying to raise two sons with very little support, so he had a rocky upbringing, and he would admit that he was rebellious and damaged in many ways. But one day, instead of the faith being something that that he was kind of grew up in and people talked about, God became real for him. God became more than something that folk and he talked about, but but the God who encountered him personally with grace. Now, I won't tell you the whole story, and the book, his memoir, is somewhat harrowing, but worth reading. It's just come out. The story goes that he was at a prayer meeting, and he found himself caught up in the parable of the Good Samaritan. So the parable ceased to be just something that he knew as a story, but something that he was in. And he found himself as the beaten up guy on the side of the road. And he found in this, this, this kind of vision he had that the Samaritan became Jesus, coming to him, tending to him, binding his wounds, bringing healing to him. And he began to realize that Jesus has a heart for the sinner, for the broken, for the rebellious, and he saw himself as a, a rebellious type, for the hurting and the lost, and that he was included in all of this. It wasn't something out there, it was something that touched him. He realised that Jesus isn't afraid of the waywardness of others. He's about forgiving and putting people on the right track. He realised that Jesus isn't absent from those who suffer and struggle. He actually shares in our darkest loneliness, loneliest and painful times. Sisters and brothers, this Jesus, of which Philip Yancey writes, of which I preach, 
responds to each of us with love that is beyond measure. Gallons of wine is actually a sign. It points to the unimaginable care and love of God, even for the most broken, the most rebellious, the most sinful. Desmond Tutu, who we saw a moment ago on the screen, was such a wonderful ambassador of this good news. Sisters and brothers, as we begin this new year, and who knows what this year will bring, remember that the faith is about Jesus who brings life in abundance, who offers healing and hope that, that is beyond anything we could imagine or believe. This morning, just take that on board yet again. Take it to your hearts. This isn't something that we just talk about at church, sisters and brothers. It's something that's real for each one of us. Let's pray. Let's move into our time of prayer. And I'm going to share our prayer of confession now. And after the words... I invite you to echo the words that I say. So when I come to the words Christ, not, not the whole prayer, just the words, when I come to the words Christ have mercy, I invite you to respond with those words and with the word Lord have mercy and also Christ have mercy. Now I've got that around the wrong way, but that doesn't matter. We'll have Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy and Christ have mercy. You'll see. Let's pray. Let us confess our sins repudiating those things that rob us and those around us of generosity and joy, of genuine life. When we have forgotten that your grace and love are not just matters for discussion, but really can bring healing and forgiveness to our scarred and hurting hearts and souls, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Whenever we have failed to pass on the abundant life and the many gifts you so freely offer to us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Whenever we have traded the new wine of the gospel for the old beverage of religious laws, anxiety and self-belittling, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. O oh, dearest Christ, brother and saviour, your superabundant forgiveness is ready ages before we seek it. Your love is enfolding us long before we become aware of it. Fill us, we pray, with the peace that the secular world cannot give us and with the joy that no doubt failure or fear can steal from us. Amen. Brothers and sisters, our God does not deal in half measures. Out of God's fullness we have received saving grace heaped upon saving grace. It is Christ who sets us free. Therefore we are free indeed. Thanks be to God. And what else can we sing after that but amazing grace?
we'll um, just pick up a few matters now, things to celebrate and things to note. Um, I'll just turn my other thing on. I notice that there, there are a couple of people with us who are visiting today, and I didn't actually add an extra welcome at the beginning to you, but a special welcome to you, those of you who are visiting or perhaps here for the first time. Um, we had a great church picnic last Wednesday. We had, great, we had a wonderful time down at Ballyang Sanctuary, and I think, I don't know, I'm never good with numbers, but was there about 50 people there, 40 people there, something like that? But a variety of people from the congregation, from our um, refugee friends, newcomer friends, it was a great time. And uh, there are a few pictures, but uh, they're far enough away that uh, all the faces can't be seen. <laughs> Except if you're watching online, then you can have a good look. <laughs> um, thank you, that's from the Christmas Bowl, for those of you who made contributions to the Christmas Bowl. Thank you for doing that. We just decided, um, a number of us thought, just during this period of intense COVID, that we, perhaps we, and also it's hard to get volunteers, the next week or two we won't be having morning tea. But please feel free to perhaps be outside and sitting around and, and sharing some, some time together. And we'll have tea, morning tea back in a week or two. But we'll just, while we've got riding this kind of really high wave of COVID, um, and of course you've got to take all your masks off, and when we're inside having cups of tea, that raises some issues. So it's not required. I mean, we, we could still serve tea, but we just thought for safety for a week or two, we would uh, we'd just, just encourage people to stand around and have a quick, perhaps, chat outside uh, rather than having our morning tea. But it'll be back. Have no fear. We'll have morning tea back as soon as possible. Um, I think that's about it. Are there any other notices that need to be shared? Jean, please. You might want to pull that down, yes, sorry. Just a little bit. Um, it's just with the food room, um, there on Friday, I noticed that um, we could do with some more wheat bix, tins of fruit, peaches, pears, whatever, large tins preferably. Um, they're more suitable for a family. Coffee, as always, and tins of, large tins of tuna would be fantastic if you were able to bring some groceries along. Thank you. And just a quick one that's missing from this week's um, notices is that at this stage we're still planning on opening up the collectibles sale on Friday and Saturday. So um, we're, we're looking forward to that. We've had a big revamp up in there over the um, Christmas period. Uh, and just a reminder to anybody, if, if you're wanting to make any donations to uh, support the refugee ministry, you're more than welcome to contact Ray or I. So we're um, looking for household items, and that can be everything from furniture to bed linen to dinner sets to cutlery services. If you've got precious items that you're not quite sure what to do with, um, uh, be assured that if you donate them through us, we'll treat them with the respect they deserve. They'll be um, put in our collectible sale um, for, and the funds that go, are raised from the collectibles will go to refugee ministry. So please um, think of us if you're doing any decluttering and tidying up or thinking, oh, I haven't used this for so many years. Um, just get in touch with Ray or I and uh, we might be able to help you out there. Then, so, then just remind us of the times that oh, you're So open. we open on Friday afternoon and Saturday morning. So 12 to 4 approximately on Friday and 9 to 12 approximately on the Saturday. Mm, thanks. Anything else that we need to hear about? Um, Joy's going to lead us in prayer in a moment. Um, perhaps you would be, but I'll just, just raise a couple of things that, that, that Joy will pick up. But in particular, you would, most of you would be aware that Michael Cox died during the week, Barbara, Barbara Cox's son, uh, Sophie's husband. So we keep them all in our thoughts and prayers. I see that the funeral is Monday week at Tucker's in Grovedale. And it's also online, so if you want to be able to share in it by going online, you'll be able to do that. 
Uh, oh, but there's a welcome, you know, there's, it's an open, at this stage, the regulations allow people to attend, but there's also the option of watching online. Yeah. Thank, thanks, um, Joy, I know you've got some other things that you're going to pick up for us too, including the tsunami in Tonga. The intercessory prayers come from the Archbishop of Uppsala and Primate of the Church of Sweden, Archbishop Angie Jacqueline. Let's all pray. God of life, God of compassion, as the pandemic continues to shake our world, we turn to you. We give thanks for the gifts of perseverance and creativity for care given and vaccines developed, for cries heard and comfort received. We come to you with all our worries, for loved ones, for societies, for jobs and economics, and for how the most vulnerable among us are being affected. Transform unrest and fear into love and care. Give us courage, wisdom, and energy to change what needs to be changed. Trusting in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray for the sick and those who are caring for them, for safe and fair distribution of vaccines, for those who mourn and those who suffer from loneliness, for those who must take difficult decisions that affect many for international cooperation in the services of justice and peace, for spiritual leadership that is faithful to your will in your mercy. Help us to hold on to what is right, true and beautiful. Through Jesus Christ, whom we have come to know as our saviour and healer. And Lord, we remember those in our own community who have lost loved ones. We remember this week of Barb Cox, whose son Michael passed away during the week. We hold his wife Sophie in our love and prayers. We pray, Lord, for the people in Tonga after the devastating tsunami. Lord, we can only pray for them. We pray also for Marlon Gilbert, for Jean Williams and others that we know that we may feel, that they may feel, the peace that only you can give, Lord. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Joy. Perhaps those who are going to help me with communion would like to come forward and help uncover the elements. make our offering prayer and for those of you who aren't aware of course the the plate should be available somewhere I'm not quite sure where it is it's in the foyer but um, or on the side there so if you haven't had that opportunity if you'd like to take it it's available let's let's pray and give thank and, and offer ourselves and our gifts to God loving God you bless us in so many ways your love is overflowing as we see in that wonderful account of Jesus 
uh, make at, at that wedding feast in Cana of Galilee. Please take and use us and our gifts. Take and use our financial resources, our time, this bread and wine, that they might be used for the, the, to reflect the gospel of Christ in so many ways. And we offer this prayer in the name of Christ. Amen. Friends, this is the joyful feast of Jesus. Bread for beloved children. A meal for those expecting scraps. And a banquet for last minute guests. Come, your place is at this table. Here Christ meets you and calls you God's own. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you, gracious Father, our maker and sustainer. All your actions show wisdom and love. Through your word you spoke creation into existence and made us in your image and likeness. When we disobeyed you and drew away from you, you did not leave us in darkness, but sent your Son, the Word made flesh, to be the light of the world. Emptying himself of all but love, he was born of Mary, shared our human nature, and died on the cross. You raised him from death to eternal life, and through him you have sent your holy and life-giving Spirit to make us your people, a people of light, to reflect your glory in all of the earth. And so with angels and archangels and all the choirs of heaven, we join in the unending hymn of praise. Holy God, we praise you that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Saviour Christ took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of Christ. Unite us with him forever and bring us with the whole creation to your eternal kingdom. We offer this prayer through Christ, with Christ, in Christ and in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we pray together the prayer that Christ taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Christ is the bread of life, child of Mary, child of God. Christ is the cup of salvation, humbled for a time, now revealed to all. Let us receive what we are. Let us become what we receive, the body of Christ. As usual, the elements will be brought to you, and uh, if, if you're unaware of the, what, what happens, it'll, you'll, be handed, you'll be offered the elements, you're invited to hold the bread until we've all received, and then we'll eat together, and then similarly with the wine.
body of Christ, keep us all in eternal life. Blood of Christ, keep us all in eternal life. Let's share in our prayer after communion. God of grace, you renew us at your table with the bread of life. May this food strengthen us in love and help us to serve you in each other. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Our final hymn is Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ.
Now the words of Desmond Tutu that people have commented on, I think there's a slide for those. Go in peace and remember goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. Life is stronger than death. Victory is ours through Christ who loved us. Amen. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest and remain with you all, now and always. Amen.